welcome to everything you need to know about Sea of Thieves, the series for new fans and old that covers every aspect of the Sea of Thieves lore. Throughout the series we'll cover the people, the factions, the events, the locations and more to make sure you always understand what is going on in the game. This week we're covering the first trading company, the Gold Hoarders. We'll go over the key individuals, their origins, how they function and trivia that you probably don't know. So let's begin. The Gold Hoarders were the first unofficial and then official trading company on the Sea of Thieves. The trading companies are groups which players can interact with in game and usually offer quests, but that's not always the case. We know the Gold Hoarders were the first based on the Athena's Fortune novel. This book contains a great deal of the history of the Sea of Thieves and covers events before the game, roughly 40 to 10 years before, if we're being more accurate. The Gold Hoarders began around two years after the Sea of Thieves discovery. They began as a gang of pirates headed by a man called Rathbone, who would later become the infamous Skeleton Lord, the Gold Hoarder. We'll cover his story more in depth, but all you need to know is that he was one of the Pirate Lord's crewmates and one of the first pirates to enter the Sea of Thieves. Another key individual in the gang at this point is Stitcher Jim. Stitcher Jim is another prominent character, whose allegiances change more than he washes. He has been involved with many different groups of pirates throughout the game's history. The gang was formed after Rathbone stole some skeleton keys from the Pirate Lord. The Pirate Lord had locked away his insane fortune in cursed chests, and scattered them around the Sea of Thieves. These are the very same chests we find in game. They can only be opened with these skeleton keys. With these skeleton keys, the gang began to search out the Pirate Lord's fortune, and were quickly known colloquially as the Gold Hoarders by the pirates who sailed the Sea of Thieves. Infamy comes with consequences, and their ships were attacked at nearly every opportunity. They formed a plan to move the gold out of the Sea of Thieves into the wider world. Due to the abundance of gold in the Sea of Thieves compared to the outside, even a chest was enough to set up a man for life. The Rathbone set up the Gold Hoarders as a legitimate business outside of the Sea of Thieves, and his empire would grow exponentially. Rathbone, too busy to sail the Sea of Thieves, began sending employees there to recover the Pirate Lord's fortune. But, as they were inexperienced, many of the ships were plundered or destroyed. In a chance encounter, Stitcher Jim was recovering in a tavern following another failed expedition, and a pirate entered with one of the Pirate Lord's chests. As only the Gold Hoarders had the keys, the pirate offered to split the loot with Jim if he opened the chest. And that revolutionised the way Gold Hoarders operated. Some 20 years after the Gold Hoarders had begun, the operation had grown to include a Gold Hoarder representative at every outpost. This is the version we experience in the game. Pirates will buy a treasure map from the Gold Hoarders, who would also source them from the Order of Souls, then carry all the risk by retrieving it. It's a win-win for the company, as if the chest is returned, the money is split with the crew who already paid for the map. If they never return, the Gold Hoarders make money anyway on a voyage they could never complete. Or even if it's stolen, the chest will always return to the Gold Hoarders. Until the Reaper's bones were established. But that's a story for another time. The Gold Hoarder eventually became cursed and moved to Tribute Peak, a giant ancient island in the northeast of the map which was home to many vaults and cursed treasure. The throne room would be a meeting place to initiate new Gold Hoarders and a place where most of the profit ends up. The representatives would keep a cut and the rest would be shipped off to this island, hence the island being called Tribute Peak. The leader of the Gold Hoarders was the Gold Hoarder himself, who eventually became consumed with his obsession for gold. The skeleton curse causes the individual to be transformed into a mindless skeleton, but people with certain character will be turned into a skeleton lord, with features accentuating their personality, wants and desires. This is why the Gold Hoarder is encrusted in gold, gems and trinkets. The Gold Hoarder is no longer the leader of the trading company, as he is currently being used as a conduit to travel to the Sea of the Damned by a faction called the Dark Brethren. He had replaced his eyes with green gems called Veil Stones. These can be used to travel from the Land of the Living to the Sea of the Damned. Stitcher Jim is also a key individual who worked for the Gold Hoarders. He was one of the first members of the gang and conspired with Rathbone to open up the Sea of Thieves to other pirates. Rathbone sold him a map showing him the way into the Sea of Thieves, which was copied and sold to many other crews. Jim would eventually stop working with the Gold Hoarder after he was defeated, but it is possible that his allegiances changed long before this when he opened the Box of Wanderer Secrets, an artifact crafted by the legendary Captain Flameheart. Gold Hoarders have several representatives on each outpost. Most of them are NPCs with a handful of dialogue, but one of the most interesting ones is Humphrey the Hoarder. Humphrey is found on Sanctuary Outpost and actually contains one of the best backstories in the entire game. He used to own a shop in the wider world, doing business with the local townsfolk. Humphrey's life was good by all accounts, he scraped by, but he was happy, mainly due to his love Annerly. One day, a member of the Grand Maritime Union, a huge and immensely powerful trading company, offered to buy his shop. 
Humphrey, being the hot-headed young man, refused the offer and kicked him out of the shop. Despite him, the Grand Maritime Union bought Humphrey's creditor, and requested his loan to be paid immediately. He didn't have the cash, and the supply lines were frozen as well. With mounting debt, things weren't looking good. Him and Annalee worked hard to try to pay the money back, but Annalee fell ill. Humphrey was unable to afford her treatment, the merchant sailors would not employ a man who had been blacklisted by the Union, as they sailed for them. Humphrey turned to piracy, garnering enough money to send back to his wife, and eventually made his way to the Sea of Thieves. It was here he encountered the Gold Hoarders. Humphrey, being enthralled by what he saw and longing for the merchant life, would eventually join as an apprentice. Through hard graft and dedication, he would eventually be given his own post, being initiated as a Gold Hoarder at Tribute Peak. Humphrey, now immensely wealthy, started sending more money back to Annalee, but this was forbidden, for the gold was never to leave the Sea of Thieves. In turn, this caused him to write a letter to the gold hoarder begging for forgiveness. Humphrey never found out the fate of his beloved, nor if any of the gold had even reached her. In his final act, he pledged his wedding ring to the gold hoarder as a means of totally committing his service to him, the last piece of Humphrey in which Rathbone did not already own. The gold hoarders all have a tattoo on them in the shape of one of the skeleton keys, which is also a company logo. Stitcher Jim also has one of these from when he was a gold hoarder. The gold hoarders we see on Outpost have skin tinged with gold. This is due to the gold curse, which can occur if someone handles cursed treasure. The Rathbone seems to have been afflicted with the gold curse and the skeleton curse at the same time. Whilst we don't know exactly what caused this, his arm becomes encrusted in gold, but after he should have died, he became a skeleton lord. It's possible that the throne at Tribute Peak has caused the skeleton curse, and the treasure had caused the gold curse. We also know that these are separate, as none of the representatives have become skeletons. The gold hoarders were already established when the other trading companies were setting up fully. The Order of Souls had just established a tent on Ancient Spire Outpost. This caused a feud between the two, where Hector the Hoarder would try to disparage Madame Amina. Madame Olivia also states, you are aware, I should think, that our order is relatively new to these waters. This occurs around 8 years before the start of the game. The gold hoarders each have a trap door underneath their tents, which is where they store large piles of gold. It looks like they also live under here in the vault as seen in the Sea of Thieves origin comic, The Price for Gold. And that just about covers the gold hoarders. Now, whenever you bother to turn into them, you have a new appreciation of their entire backstory, how they work, and the key individuals who are part of them. Next time you see Humphrey, buy him a drink, he certainly needs it. Make sure you subscribe to keep up the series, we've got the Merchant Alliance next week. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.